yes and we're live so for everybody who is immediately tuning in to this class of the pro air university i want to say welcome to this live class that is called wax on wax off in which we will be talking about wax and creating wounds with wax so before we will start i will quickly set up my computer to follow the live class as well as my phone is quite a distance away from me i can't really read any comments if you would have any questions so let me quickly get that done um, here we go so I can read comments so Donna is watching obviously and I'm looking at myself it's kind of distracting but okay um, so yeah welcome to this uh, class on the Pro Air University let me start off by saying thank you to Donna and Erica for asking me to give a class here on this university um, today we're going to talk about wax but first maybe I need to introduce myself so my name is Linda I am from the Netherlands as you can probably hear by my accent um, I am a special effects makeup artist and own a store in the Netherlands. It's called Schmink en Green. So we sell all sorts, as you can see, a bit of the store at this point. Uh, and one of the brands we have is Pro Air. You can see it back there. A lovely lot of Pro Air. Um, and yeah, um, so I am a special effects makeup artist. I started special effects makeup about 10 years ago, a bit before I started the store. Um, and that is why uh, Donna asked me to do a wax course today. So let me quickly say, hi Simone, hi Donna, hi Sabrina. Lovely that you are watching this. So today we are gonna create a wax wound. Probably most of you have already worked with wax um, in the past because of Halloween obviously um, but maybe I can give you some tips that could help you improve your wax wounds so first thing I'm gonna do is clean my skin and I do that with alcohol that is uh, nice because it kills germs and well with the current uh, corona crisis we of course want to keep everything nice and clean so I decided to make a wax wound on my arm Usually I put stuff on my face, but um, then I would probably block view with the mirror and that you can't see what I'm doing. So once the skin is clear, hi from Ireland, hi Thomas. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions, please just type them. I will try to answer as many of them as I can. Um, so yeah, wax. There are a few different types of wax, as you might know. Uh, we have two different ones at our store. That hi Angelina. Um, a few different ones at our store. I was saying that we sell, and they are pretty different. So I have one by Meron, and I have one by Benai. So we're gonna work with the Benai wax today, but I definitely wanted to show you the wax by Meron as well. So Sin Wax is. A pretty firm wax it is a wonderful wax to work with but it does take a bit longer to create wounds with than when you use the wax by Ben Nye so if you scoop a bit of the sin wax from the jar it's pretty firm and before you can actually go and apply it to the skin you need to massage it between your fingers because otherwise it won't stick to your skin it will be very hard to uh, create wounds with it so once it's nice and flexible, you can apply it to the skin and make wounds. So as this is a firm wax, it holds better. It's, um, I'm sorry, I'm Dutch. So sometimes I need to think about the words uh, in English. Um, it holds shape better than a softer wax like the wax by Ben Nye. So if you are creating stuff for yourself, for Instagram or for Facebook or maybe even YouTube videos, you can definitely work with a wax like the one by Ben Nye. If you would want to go out with wax, I think I would go with the Sin Wax because it just stays on the skin longer and more beautiful. But for today, just because it's easier to work with, we are going to work with the wax by Ben Nye. So before I apply wax to my skin, 
Hi Monica. Hi June from Canada. Lovely that you are all watching. So what I do when I apply wax to my skin is put a bit of glue under it and I'm always using the Prosade. Pro Air has a wonderful Prosade as well. I just emptied my bottle so that is why I'm using this one today. So when I went to school to become a makeup artist they taught me to put spirit gum under wax and to be honest that isn't really something I like because uh, in my opinion if you use spirit gum that's kind of a hard glue the layer of glue becomes hard and when you put it on the skin and the skin moves a lot if you speak I speak with my forehead I speak well all the skin just keeps moving the spirit gum tends to break and then um, the wound will get ruined so uh, Glue like Prosade is a flexible glue and that helps to keep the wound on the skin longer and beautiful. So um, you can apply the Prosade with a Q-tip. You can also use a brush, but cleaning Prosade from a brush is kind of uh, annoying work. So I always just use a Q-tip and I'm going to put it on my wrist somewhere so you can see and I can see it as well. Let me see, bring your items to the camera. Okay, I'm so sorry. So um, there is the Prosade. This is the Prosade sold by Mold Life. But as I just said, um, Pro Air has an amazing Prosade as well. So if you apply Prosade to the skin, it is white and you do need to wait for it to become transparent. If you want to glue anything to it while it's still white, it will just fall off because it starts working as a glue as soon as it is transparent. Um, so let me wait just a sec for this to become transparent. I will check if there are any questions. Hi Rose. Hi Patty. So I never been live on Facebook before and um, I was kind of nervous for this but I must say it is loads of fun already. So the Prosade has become transparent and um, I'm going to use the wax by Ben Nye. So this is the wax, this is just the skin tone. There is also, if you have a darker skin, there is a medium brown and a dark brown one. Um, so you don't have to adjust it as much if you have our tanned person. Um, and to apply the wax to the skin, I am going to use my spatula. So these are just by our own store. We make them our, now we don't make them ourselves, but they are made for us. Um, Meron sells these spatulas as well. Um, and they are a must have for any special effects makeup artist. So I just scoop a bit of this wax from the jar. You don't need to massage this between your fingers. It is very easy to work with. It's very soft. So what I'm going to do is going to roll it into a little worm. And if you have any questions during my demo, please ask them. And once you have a nice worm, you get that to the prosade. And it will stick to it pretty well. So I'm quickly going to clean my spatula because there is a bit of wax on there. And I do want a clean spatula. So this wax will stick. This wax will stick to anything. Uh, so if I put my spatula to it, it will stick to the spatula again and you just don't get a nice, clean, smooth layer of wax on your skin. So that is where you need a Vaseline or petroleum jelly. Um, and if you put that to the spatula, the wax won't stick to the spatula anymore and it makes it easier to smooth out that wax. So I always start by just making a smooth base for my wound. And I took quite a lot of the wax, to be honest. So can you still see? And what I want to create is just a nice smooth surface of wax. So I'm just going to turn around a sec. And 
the most important part of this step is that you can get a smooth edge to the skin so you don't have any edges to that wax because if you have any edges that gives away that it is fake and it doesn't sell the wound as well so Let me check. So yeah, how do you keep your tools sanitized? That is a great uh, question, Donna. Usually I have a stack of baby wipes and I will just get baby wipes and clean them. So that makes them clean and sanitized uh, pretty well. If you are in doubt if a baby wipe would do it for you, you just have your alcohol, which cleans basically anything and kills anything and you can just use these lovely little pads to put the alcohol on the spatula so these are used for nail polish removal in nail salons i guess i don't really know what they are called but they're cheap and um that's something we like as artists so uh back to the wound now i have the wax smoothed out pretty well over my skin but you can still see i don't know if you can see but there are kind of stripes on there of the spatula and well, we don't want any stripes on there because our skin doesn't have that and that is why i'm back to the petroleum jelly i just put a bit of that on my finger and with my finger i smooth out the wax as good as i can Basically, I want to create an invisible layer of wax on my skin. Hi, Eric. Lovely that you're watching my live feed. So now there is a nice layer of wax. And if you are in doubt, if you have made all those edges invisible, you can go and Put some powder over it you want to powder this anyway because the petroleum jelly is grease and as we want to color it and we want that color to keep being on our wound we need to get rid of that grease and that is something we do with a powder so this is the color set powder by Meron but you can basically use any setting powder to do this so I have a lovely fluffy brush this one is by Titanic effects it is one of their beauty brushes. I am the person that would throw over the entire jar of powder, trying to show you this. Uh, but yeah, powder, and I'm just powdering the entire wax wound. I'm always very generous with the powder I'm using. But when you don't have a clean edge, you will get kind of white stripes around the edges and you can see that you need to smooth out that wax a bit more for it to become invisible so now i have powdered it i can see that i didn't do the best job in the world on smoothing out that wax so i'm quickly gonna clean my spatula again and i'm going back in would baby powder work yes baby powder would work but uh, baby powder tends to be very white. If you put baby powder over this, um, it doesn't have that um, translucency. Is that the English word? You would get a kind of white layer over your wax and um, that would be a bit more work to cover it. But yes, baby powder is also a powder and that would work. Um, so I'm quickly going to go back in with my spatula because I'm not completely happy with that edge I'm looking at. And um, I'm sorry, I'm getting all kinds of messages here on my phone. I hope you don't hear all that sound. Um, where is my petroleum jelly? Here it is. So uh, the skin on my forearm is pretty smooth i mean there is not that much texture on there but on your skin 
um, I have kind of big pores. You can really see them if you come up close. Uh, so if I put a wax on my skin, you could definitely see a nice smooth layer of wax in comparison to my natural skin. So to um, hide the wax even better on the skin, you can get yourself a stipple sponge, put a bit of petroleum jelly on there and just gently stipple over that petroleum jelly. With doing that, you give the wax a texture and that is like a skin texture. So it hides it better on the skin than when you would just make that incredibly nice clean layer of wax. And once you're happy, you, I have added more petroleum jelly to the wound, so I do need to powder it, but I also need to make the wound. So I will just do that uh, all together. So now I'm happy with the base layer of wax. Can you bring your arm closer to the camera? I can try. So, there it is. Um, I can try to get my camera closer. I'm sorry. So, does that help? I'm not completely in view anymore. That isn't that important, but... Yay, there I am again. So there I am with my wax wound. And then it's time to make a wound. So for the first few years of me making wax wound, it was very simple. I made a layer of wax. I took my spatula and just made a clean line. That was it. That was my method of making wounds. So a few years ago, I discovered that there is actually a bit more you can do with a spatula than just make clean cuts. So what I do these days is I start with the pointy side of the spatula. And when you start turning that spatula, you can get all interesting shapes to a wound. So I'm hoping you can see this. And of course, you do want to end the wound on the pointy side again, because otherwise it wouldn't end. Um, so there is a base for a wound. Let me quickly clean my spatula. Where else would wax be used for? So we use wax to cover eyebrows. So I wouldn't recommend putting Synwax by Meron on your eyebrows because it's a pain in the... Yes, to get rid of that wax on your eyebrows again. But you can basically create anything with wax. I have seen enormous uh, zombies with only wax. I have seen everything. So it's kind of a clay kind of something you can put on your skin. So yeah, I usually only make wounds with it, but you can definitely build on the skin anything you would want with wax. So go crazy. Um, I need to, ah, here it is. I'm sorry, I was looking for my stipple sponge. So everything is in front of me, but that doesn't mean I don't lose stuff during this live video. So um, now I created this wound. The edges of my wound are kind of sticking outward. And uh, with, when you would get a real wound and cut yourself, the edges of the wound wouldn't be standing out. Your skin would kind of protect you and the wound edges would go inside. Um, so those edges sticking out doesn't really make this into a realistic looking wound. And that is why I'm once again back with my stippling sponge and just dabbing over those edges, kind of pushing them into the wound. Um, by the way, if you are not happy with the wound you have created, if you uh, don't like the shape or the form, I'm just going to leave it like this for today, um, you can go back. It's just wax, so you can keep uh, changing it if you would want to. So, um, let me check it. So yeah, maybe I do want there to be a little something extra over here. But now I'm going to leave it. 
So there is the website, boom. Um, my best friend just tuned in. Um, so yeah, there is the wound. And I'm once again gonna clean my spatula so I don't have that wax on there anymore. And as we once again use petroleum jelly, we're gonna powder it again. Any more questions? Hi, Shanna. So everything is white over here now. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna powder it again just to get rid of the grease of the petroleum jelly. And with that, the base of my wound is all done. So it's easy enough to do. It does take a few minutes to get those edges nice and clean if you want to start working with wax and if you've never done it before you will probably curse a bit before you get the hang of it but once you do it is fun and um, well you can create anything with it so now we have the base it is time to start coloring the wound and for that I usually use my oh, alcohol activated makeup palette so I have palettes by Encore and I for wounds use two of them, the skin tone palette and the blood palette. If you don't have alcohol activated makeup palettes, you probably have Pro Air because you are watching the Pro Air University. I guess you have Pro Air um, and you can definitely use all the lovely red tones that Pro Air has in their collection. So you have red from light to dark and that is enough to create a lovely wound with. If you don't have a Pro Air or even the solids. There is this lovely trauma palette, amazing to create trauma with. There it is. Sorry for how it looks. Um, you might have some grease paints. So um, I don't like to use grease paints as they are in alcohol of, or in alcohol activated makeup. I'm sorry. I don't like grease paints to use as they are because I always think it's very thick and uh, hard to use on creating wounds. But there is a little trick that I wanted to show you that you could use grease paint as if it is uh, alcohol activated makeup. And um, this is the Ultimate of X palette by Ben Nye. It has 18 colors all for special effects makeup so if you would want i'm trying not to damage the wound i just created so if you want to use this as if it was an alcohol activated makeup you once again get your spatula and just choose a color i'm picking the red one and i'm putting it on my mixing palette Ooh. don't throw it away Ooh. sorry Hi Kelly, lovely of all of you to watch me demonstrating wax today. So back to the alcohol, back to the grease paint, I'm sorry. Um, so if you want to work with grease paint and if it was an alcohol activated makeup, you get yourself a bit of alcohol. I always use 99.9% um, because I love the highest percentage of alcohol. And then you get yourself a brush. I have stippling brushes by Titanic Effects. So they have different lengths of hair. That is something that's very easy to work with in special effects makeup. And then I dip the brush in the alcohol. And when you put it to the grease paint, you can dilute it. So it's just running down my palette. It's just to show you today that even if you don't have those expensive palettes, you can still work with it like you do have them. So that dilutes it and that makes it very easy to create thin washes of makeup on your skin. So you don't really have to use it like the thick, very colored substance it usually is. Um, 
so if you are on a budget or you have a client that is on a budget this is something you should definitely try just put a bit of alcohol with it i wouldn't do it in the palette so i would use a mixing palette um, but that works amazingly uh, but that's not what i'm gonna do today oh let me quickly clear this all out of the way before i'm all red with grease paints um, so yeah, I'm going to work with the palettes by European Body Art. These are the Encore palettes and this is the skin cover up. So I I'm sorry how this looks. It's just an artist showing her stuff. Um, so this is the skin cover up palette. As you can see, the lightest skin tones are almost done, but well, I can still do a few months with this uh, palette. Um, and to get your wax into a skin tone, you just, that's difficult. I know that's difficult, um, but that is just something you have to discover once. And once you have discovered it, it's the same always. So basically the wax is almost in the correct color for me being on my wrist. I could get away with it just leaving it like this. If I would put it on my face, as you can see, I have kind of red spots on my face you would definitely see that the wax wouldn't be red and I am red so I wouldn't cover the entire wax with skin tones until I have my own what I would do is get this rosy pink color and just add a bit of that to the wax and the wax would disappear from my skin before I had two or three layers on there. It could be that you would need a bit of the olive color or maybe a bit of yellow. Uh, maybe you would need a bit of a light skin tone with a bit of the red, but um, just test uh, the way you need to put as little makeup over the wax as possible. So um, just for show, because as you can see, I don't really need to do that today. I will put a bit of the rosy color over this. And has every anyone have any questions yet? Um, so I have a bit of the rosy color on my stippling brush. Once again, this is one of the Titanic FX brushes. If you are looking for nice brushes for special effects makeup, these are definitely the ones to go with. Um, and you can just stipple light layers of that red over your wax until you're happy. So as you can see, I'm making it way too pink immediately. I don't need that on my wrist, but for the hell of it, I'm just gonna make it red as I would on my face. So there it is. And I always color the outside of the wound first and then continue to the inside because if you have colored the inside and you accidentally pick up on a bit of the red that you just put in the wound then you would be well you would have red everywhere and that's not something you want so once you're happy with the outside of the wound you can continue to the inside so as i said you can use the grease paint you can use pro air which you can dilute as well best way to go is with the pro long by pro air but you can also put alcohol with it it also works but it works better with the prolong so here is my blood palette also used a lot the lid is come loose of this palette and to color the inside of the wound i just use regular face painting brushes this is a detail brush a small one and i always go from the lightest color to the darkest color so i can build up on the depth of my wound so i'm just gonna color the entire inside of the wound with this red color um, and you just want to go all to the edge of the wound when coloring it so how am I for time? Can I see anywhere? Donna, will you keep me posted if my hour is up? Because probably I can talk to you hours about wax. And I did get a time limit today. What would you never mix into... I 
I don't understand the question, Donna. What, what I wouldn't use to color wax, I wouldn't use water activated makeup because I don't like how it behaves on wax. That is the same with grease paint without alcohol with it. I, I don't like how it behaves. It gives away the edges and it makes it look kind of fake. And water activated makeup doesn't do what I want it to do. Maybe it works great when you apply a wax wound and put water activated makeup over it. I just don't really like that. So there is a base of red on my wound. What palettes are you using? Um, well, right now this is one of the Encore palettes. They are by European Body Art. Um, this is the lid of this palette. I also use Solid, so I have the Trommel palette by Pro Air. I love that. Um, but to be honest, if I have uh, to use, or not if I have to use, I love using Pro Air, but usually I just take the hybrids. I love that they are already liquid and just put a bit of alcohol or Prolong with it and you can really um, make amazing wounds with them. Um, Oh my god, Wiser is watching, so that doesn't make me nervous at all. So uh, we also have the Wiser stencils at our store, by the way. Just a bit of promotion for Wiser. And um, so Barry Perkins um, just joined, if I'm correct, he is teaching the Drag Queen Makeup course tomorrow, so definitely tune in for that, I know I will. Um, so I need my blow palette back. Why did I put it aside? So now the basic color is in there. We are going to build up the color. So I'm going to take the second color of red, which is over here in my palette. And I won't keep adding color to the entire wound because then I could just only put the darkest color in. So I'm going to paint less and less of my wound to create a bit of depth. So I always find it hard to keep talking and be painting at the same time. So let me quickly get this bit as well. So there are two colors in the wound. And you might have guessed we are still going darker. So I'm going to choose this color. So the darker the blood color, the older the blood is. Finally, we have a brownish color that is for dried, very old blood. And painting less of that wound still. So I'm just building up until it looks nice. That's basically what we're doing. And yes, we are going to add blood. So uh, I know that maybe a bit of this is unnecessary, but I do like to give attention to the entire wound. I think it sells it better once you're done. And obviously at the end of a gig, we want that woe factor of that client that is sitting in our chair and has been watching everything you were doing to create that wound. There is the darker color and finally I am going to use the brown color. So let me show you that is this one. That is really all blood and I will just put a bit of that on this wound. So I'll just put it in the deepest part of the wound. So, there it is and now I am happy with how the inside of the wound looks. <clears throat> Let me quickly clean my brush. Oh. Any questions? Hi Eva! Didn't see you yet. C. 
so um, then it's time for a bit of blood and I have a few different ones I set aside to use so I love the bloods by Vermilion effects I don't know if you know the brand but they have a few lovely very thick bloods and they are made with forensic accuracy this is a couple and she makes the bloods and he is a forensic scientist so they um, really make the bloods um, the way they should look and that is something I like so I have the clot paste here it's a very dark blood I'm going to use this in the wound so I have a spatula again and it looks like this I don't know if you can see I will scoop a bit of it out of the jar so there is the blood this one is pretty easy to put in wounds don't need too much Ooh. so you have the blood you have your wound and you will just put a bit in there so I have way too much because I don't want to fill out or fill the entire wound with blood because otherwise why would I have put all the work in there to make this wound I think it looks better if you don't put that much in there sorry I'm trying to get it well distributed over my wound Oh, are you watching from the start, Ava? I'm sorry. I didn't see. Ooh. I'm messing with the blood. So you can use a brush as well. If the spatula doesn't work for you, you can just use a brush and just smear the blood over and in the wound. And as you can see, I don't want to fill out the entire wound with blood. I just told you that. I'm sorry. I'm repeating myself so there you have it I still want to see some of those edges and inside of the wound I think that adds to the realism of the wound um, and I'm gonna clean my brush so once you have the thick blood in there I obviously want to add some liquid blood as well and I do have a favorite or a favorite brand that is and that is the blood by Mold Life so this is the venial blood it is a lovely color and I never use it straight from the bottle I think that that doesn't help me to put the blood where I want it to be so I have a little cup in which I pour just a little bit of the blood you don't need that much And then with a brush, let me check if this one is clean, yes, with a brush I will dab a bit of the blood around the wound, so don't, and I know this looks strange, I promise you it will all be alright in just a minute. So there is my wound ruined with loads and loads of blood all around it so you can make this as big or small as you want I always like to put just a bit around the wound and once you have this on your skin you get yourself a baby wipe and a spray bottle of water and just spray that baby wipe with a bit of water and what you want to do then is remove most of the blood from the wax again so what this will give you is kind of an orange staining uh, to your wax and to your skin if you put it very widely on your skin and in my opinion that helps with selling the realism of a wound you can also do this with um, the alcohol activated makeups of course but I just think it's easier to do it with the blood it looks very organic once you are happy with what you did and it's faster than doing it with alcohol activated makeup so 
So that makes me happy. Can you see? So now I know if I would have a cut like this one on my wrist, I uh, would probably have loads of blood pouring out of the wound. Uh, so that is something you can add. Uh, no, this blood doesn't dry. There are a few bloods that do dry. They are, uh, by Vermilion FX, has a few very lovely drying bloods. I love those. And uh, the reason I love these is because the color it leaves when they are dabbed off like this. So most bloods, not most bloods, but many bloods turn pink or pinkish when you dab them. And well, our blood doesn't look pinkish when you have a very thin layer of it. It does have that orange to it. So, um, but for Halloween, for um, vampires, monsters, zombies, I usually use the uh, scab colored drying blood by Vermilion FX. That is a lovely blood. And once it has dried, your client can well, party all night and the blood won't go anywhere. So that is a nice blood if you are working um, for Halloween. Uh, so if you would put a liquid blood inside of the wound and let it go its natural course out of the wound. It's always hoping, of, or I, I always hope that it goes the way I want it to. Uh, you can help it a bit with A brush but to be honest this is not something I usually do I usually just make my wound the way I just had it because I think that looks better than with that big red stripe of blood running down but that is just a personal preference so if you do like loads of blood running out of your wounds you should definitely add that that is just not something I like so I did put loads of blood in the wound let me quickly remove a bit of that as well so yeah there is my wound all done and complete um, oh the thick blood yes the thick blood does dry so there are a few different ones the cloth paste does dry so if you put it in the wound in 10 minutes it is dry this is the dry fresh blood paste that also dries. This is a very interesting one. Let me quickly show this to you. This is called sinewy blood gel. And it is, it takes kind of practice <laughs> to work with this blood. It is very slimy that doesn't dry. And I also had the blood here by um, Ben Nye, the thick blood and that dries as well. Um, but no, most bloods just stay liquid or slimy, but I have a few that do dry. Um, so yeah, there is my wound all finished. Um, and I don't know if anyone has any questions at this point. No questions. Can you use... Can you use staples or pins? Yes, you can. So I usually say uh, that you should be safe. So um, if you would want to use anything, make sure it is uh, it, that it isn't sharp uh, because um, you are very careful with your own body, of course. But if you use staples and you are going to go to a party and someone hugs you and all those staples would actually penetrate your real skin that would hurt uh, but yeah definitely you can well put anything on it you can make um, stitches you can just stitch up a wound like this one you can put uh, staples in there you can uh, put little sharp objects on there but once again I wouldn't wear anything sharp to a party or anything but yeah you, you can um, build on it if you want to put something big in wax you would need to build up the wax higher and that well 
lessens the realism on a wound. But yes, obviously yes. We want more. I love you, Simone. Um, so let me quickly show you how to remove this as well. So if you are done with your wound and you posted your picture on Instagram or Facebook, you want to get rid of it again. It's very simple. You just once again take your spatula, something you want in your special effects kit, and you start somewhere and just scoop it off. It's as easy as that. So... Um, I will get that on a baby wipe and you can just remove it and anything that is left on the skin you can remove with water and soap um, oh yes there was the removal I was one step ahead of you Donna so um, that's it um, so yeah I, I hope you liked uh, me teaching you live here on Facebook. Um, if you are interested, we also have a YouTube channel where I have loads of how to use tutorials. We have more tutorials on wax. We have tutorials on alcohol activated makeup, making bruises, applying bald caps, making beards, uh, liquid latex in all shapes and forms. There's so much you can do with liquid latex as well. Skull gel, prosthetics, live casting. So um, my company name is kind of difficult if you are English, but it is youtube.com slash schminkengrim. So maybe uh, we can add that somewhere in the comments uh, if you are interested. Our YouTube channel is in English as well. So so, um, yeah, there is that. And uh, well, our Facebook is in Dutch, but our Instagram is in English as well. And I would love to uh, follow you as well if you are in the face painting special effects industry. Um, and I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, so tomorrow there is an amazing class here by... Um, uh, Barry Perkins, I don't know if I remembered that correctly, but that is a drag queen, um, con not a contest, a class. So definitely tune in tomorrow with uh, Barry and next week there are some amazing teachers. So definitely stay tuned here and uh, I hope you enjoyed. Stay safe and uh, maybe I will see you next time. Bye bye.